Well, hello, Shoreline Church and friends of Shoreline. This is your devotional for August 10th. And I'm calling this devotional, I don't think so, or I'm not going to do it. Let me tell you why. We're going to be looking at James 5, 16. One verse, let me read it to you, and you might immediately understand why many people might say, I don't think so, to this verse. Here it is. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. That opening line, therefore confess your sins to each other. Most people are going to go, I don't think so. Uh, no one's business. I, I heard uh, Evie Hill, the great uh, preacher and pastor, pastor of the church in South Central LA. I got to visit that church one time, four and a half hour service, and that led to their evening service of three hours. People got a couple hours to go home and they were back for evening service. And, uh, and Evie Hill had said in an interview, I saw him interviewed in when some pastors had messed up and fallen. And, uh, and the, the, the host of the interview said, uh, Pastor Hill, you know, if, you had, if you had sinned, and if you had, you know, and he was implying if you had sinned like these other people, but he said, if you have sinned, and Evie Hill said, let there be no if. And the, and the host was kind of startled. He didn't know what he meant. He said, excuse me? And Evie Hill said, let there be no if. And the guy said, I don't know what you mean. And Evie said, he said, you said, if I've sinned. He said, I've sinned. The difference is my sin's private. Their sin became public. Uh, his whole point was we all sin, right? But here James says there's something about confessing your sins to each other, not to everyone. But here's my encouragement. You should have one or two people in your life who you trust, who love you, who love Jesus, that when you are struggling, when you are tempted, when you are entering into sin or when you've dove headlong into sin, you can go to them, let them know, pray with them, let them pray for you, invite them to keep you accountable, to walk in holiness, to turn away from that sin. See, sin grows in darkness. When you bring sin into the, into the light, it actually dies. The light of Jesus begins to kill our sin, but when no one knows, when it's just between us and, and Jesus and it's hidden in the darkness, it continues to grow and grow and grow. When we confess our sins to other believers who we trust and who we love, when they're free to confess their sins to us, we can acknowledge the battle, we can pray for each other, we can encourage each other, we can challenge each other to live the right way, and there's power in that. And so the passage says first, it says, you know, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. Don't just confess, pray for power, for freedom, for release from those sins, so that you may be healed. Uh, there, I think we've talked about physical healing before. This is talking about healing from sin, healing from the brokenness, from the death of sin. You can be transformed in the power of Jesus. And then we read this. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Again, a reminder. Uh, not that we are perfect, but we're made righteous in Jesus and we learn to walk in the ways of Jesus and there is power in prayer. So, in your prayer life, do you ever invite someone to pray for you in your areas of battle and sin? Do you have someone you can confess the, that battle to, that sin to, they can pray for you and you can experience God's healing? I hope you do and if you don't, I encourage you to find someone like that to be a part of your life. Lord God, thank you that you have the power to heal, you have the power to forgive. And we understand, Lord, that we all battle. We, we can say like Evie Hill did, let there be no if. Let there be no if. I have sinned. I struggle. Every one of us do. Lord, give us each one or two people who love you, who love us, who are confidential, who we can confess our sin to, who will pray with us and for us, who will keep us accountable so that we can become more like you, Lord Jesus. We pray this in your name and for your glory. Amen. Well, blessings on you for the rest of the week, and we will hopefully see you online or on campus, 9 o'clock and 11, worship services at Shoreline Church. Have a great week.